something's going on in Star Wars, and it begins with the Ahsoka Tano series. You know, the one that just ended like last month. The one that should have been 10 to 12 episodes long because we loved it so much. You know, yeah, that one. Balin Skull finds the statues of the gods of Mortis, or the ones, or the three, whatever you want to call them. He finds those statues on another planet in another galaxy, meaning the Force is strong on this planet as well. Now, there are a lot of things that we've caught up on and figured out in this Star Wars universe. Like, is Balin Skull going to become one of the gods of Mortis, possibly the father, while Anakin's the son and Ahsoka Tano is the daughter? Okay, that's pretty easy to pick up on if that's the direction they are going. But we missed something. We missed that the Force is in this galaxy, and I want to talk about that. But before I go on, I do want to give a shout out to this video's sponsor, Joyte, J-O-Y-T-E-Y. And don't go anywhere because I really want you guys to hear what I have to talk about concerning the Force and Ahsoka, but this little sponsorship could take a couple minutes of your time, and I'm so sorry for that. Not really. I'm excited for this. Bam! Check this thing out. Look at this. Look at this. Doesn't look like much but it's got it where it counts, kid. This is the Joyte Star Projector Galaxy Light, and it's amazing, I love it. The sponsor sent me this as a trial for review. Now look at it, look at all these buttons. These all do different things. Then you got two dials over here, one there, one there. And look at that, see that? That's a lens cover. You put it on and it covers up the color, the ambient color, so to speak. And you I already put it on. Now I'm going to take it off. Take it off, and you get to see all the colors. Ha! -ha. But you're asking me, what the heck does it do? Well, it projects stars and a galaxy on your wall. And these little knobbies here, these will change what you see as far as the background picture. Then you have this little mode thing here that'll switch the colors. It'll switch all kinds of things. This thing has so many options. It's pretty cool. Now, the coolest thing I've found that I can do with it, and it's probably not the coolest thing other people can do with it. Where's the plug? Plug it in. It plugs in with a USB-C type cord and comes with this nifty remote that gives you all the options as well. So you turn it on and listen. Bluetooth mode. <laughs> Yeah, make some spooky stuff with stars on your face and stuff. Yeah, but now let's check out what it does on a wall. This is actually the coolest part. Don't mind my shaky hand. I'm trying to hold a camera here and work the computer at the same time, but look at it. The stars don't just sit there. They twinkle. They swirl. Sometimes they even get brighter and put off a little glare and everything. It's really neat. And like I said, this little dial here on the side, which I'm not showing you because I already did, will switch other things like a something whole, a random planet, a another random planet, a black hole, and back to the swirling galaxy, which doesn't actually swirl, but that's okay. And if you flip the other one on the other side, if I can reach it here, you get constellations. Woo, neato. Check that out. Isn't that cool? I like it in between them because, as you know, I am a Star Wars fanatic. And being a Star Wars fanatic, I'm not going to accept a sponsor that doesn't include something that I can use as Star Wars or in my Star Wars room. And this thing it just really does it. It really captures what I'm trying to go for in my little Star Wars studio. Now let's talk about some of the features on this nifty device. Yeah, I say nifty a lot and I'm going to say it more, so get over it. Anyways, these are lenses and these are what projects the stars, the galaxy or planet or whatever you choose. And you can actually change these out eventually. See that? That's one disc, and it comes with two other discs that you can change out. And now I'm gonna put this one back in because I like it. This one's my favorite one. 
and they even have on their website or their Amazon store where you can buy other discs to put in it. Some Christmassy ones, I like those. Those are pretty neat. And also on this, like I said, the lens cover comes off to show some lights. I didn't show that on the display on the wall. I'm sorry for that, but you guys have to get your own and do it yourself. Another thing is this nifty, wifty, swifty, swifty, not Taylor Swift. God, I'm so tired of hearing about her in the Kansas City Chiefs games. Can't the game just be about football, please? Sorry, I shouldn't add that narrative in there, but I'm keeping it. Uh -uh. But you got this kickstand and it can sit up like this so you can project it on a wall or you put the kickstand down, then set it up like this and you beam it straight to your ceiling. Straight up there, right up in it, right up in your ceiling. But my ceiling's kind of corrugated so I didn't feel like it's necessary to do that because it looks kind of goofy, but it looks great on that wall. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take little strips of black tape and put them over some of these areas, just tiny little strips. So when it projects on the wall, it looks like I'm looking out a window or a viewport of a spaceship, a uh, starship, Star Wars starship. Because this is my Star Wars man cave. This is my haven. I don't like flying. I freaking hate flying as you've seen in one of my videos, but I don't mind simulating flying. But this thing is awesome. I'm gonna put a link in the description to their Amazon store so you can go and check it out for yourself and if you've ever been you know waiting to buy one of these things get this one it's amazing i don't get any kickbacks from it i got the piece for review and i love it and if i had another room i'd buy another one wow went a little long on that one yeah that's okay i'm leaving it let's get back to some good old-fashioned star wars shall we and it starts with the ahsoka series I want to give a big shout out to Ambient Z Music for the idea for this video. There's something huge that we missed in the Ahsoka Tano series. I missed it. You missed it. Everybody missed it. Haven't seen anybody talk about it. And that is when they find Ezra Bridger and Grand Admiral Thrawn and they dazzle us with the visuals of that whole thing and everything going on around it with the story and all that, a long awaited reunion and so on and so forth. We failed to understand that they're able to use the force in this new galaxy. Now that means that the force can not only be used in Galaxy Prime, the main galaxy, the OG galaxy, whatever you want to call it. It's everywhere and that makes sense right because no big deal the force is in all living things as yoda said okay yeah that makes sense but not only are they able to use the force in that galaxy the statues of the ones the gods of mortis and so on are there that not only is the force present on peridia but it's also prevalent the force goes hard on this planet it's strong Okay, no big deal. Again, so what? The force is everywhere. But what does that mean for OG Galaxy or Galaxy Prime? What does it mean for the force? Think about it. The balance in the force. Destroying Palpatine wasn't the balance after all. Now we can look to the creator of Star Wars himself, George Lucas, and listen to his words where he said balance in the force means destroying the dark side, not equal parts. Now I have a different idea on it and maybe I'm wrong and according to George Lucas I am, but who cares? I think balance is equal parts of both, but we got to listen to George Lucas on this one where he says destroying the dark side is the balance. Now, with the death of Darth Vader and the death of Emperor Palpatine, one would understand that balance has been restored according to George Lucas. But yes, it does balance the force in the prime galaxy, the main galaxy, the galaxy we all know, the one that contains Luke Skywalker and all that stuff. But what we're seeing from the Ahsoka Tano series is that the force is everywhere. And think about the universe. And it's probably not just that universe. It contains our universe as well, where the force is everywhere. Potentially. Potentially everywhere. Potentially in every one of the billions of galaxies that are in that universe. <sighs> All right. Let me simplify it. That means there are billions of galaxies in that universe which potentially contain the force or the force contains it, however you want to look at it. But that also means 
that there are potentially billions of dark side users out there trying to control each one of those galaxies. And destroying one dark sider in Palpatine doesn't restore balance to the force other than in the OG galaxy. But there is a flip side to it. What if the force is not present in those galaxies? Hold on, don't run away. But rather tagged along for a ride with Ahsoka Tano, Ezra Bridger, Balin Skull, Shen Hati, and Sabine Wren. And what if when the gods of Mortis were there, if they were there, and I presume they were by the giant statues that were there, the freaking statues that uh, shows that they were there, and the Night Sisters, when what if when they went to this galaxy, the force went with them and it wasn't really there all along? It's a thought. Or there's the other slight possibility that all the other galaxies have learned to live in harmony with the Force and there aren't really any dark side users in any of the billions of galaxies. Yeah, it's, it's not plausible, is it? But I stick with it. That could be a possibility. That the OG galaxy, Galaxy Prime, whatever you want to call it, has not figured out how to balance the force within themselves. That maybe it's still a younger galaxy that hasn't been developed that much or hasn't evolved past the point of wanting to totally dominate the force and be a gatekeeper as to who can use the force and who can use the light side, who can use the dark side, and so on and so forth. Or maybe that there are just too many humans in the OG galaxy that keep mucking things up. Yes, I know there are some non-human races that have the force, but the majority of them have been humans from what we've seen. And just like in our own planet where there are too many humans trying to dominate everything, maybe that's what's going on in the OG galaxy and all the other galaxies are like, man, Stay away from those guys. They're kind of idiots. But what that means is that we overlooked it that the force is on this other planet, on this uh, in this other galaxy, and that any one of those beings could try to come to the OG galaxy to take over. Balance is not restored. The whole thing with Anakin Skywalker being this prophetic son or whatever is just a sidetrack. Now, I'm not saying that Star Wars is broken by any means. It isn't. This just expands it beyond what we were able to comprehend before. We always thought of Star Wars just in this little galaxy. Now that it's moved on to another galaxy, it's going to change a lot of things in a lot of way we think, and it's going to add to the story even more. Now, I'm not saying that Anakin Skywalker's prophecy was wrong. I'm just saying that in the OG galaxy, it could have been true. That likely was true, but for the rest of the universe, there's something else going on, and it's going to be hard for just the beings in this one galaxy to go throughout the universe and wipe out all the Darksiders. It's going to be almost impossible. So the wars in Star Wars is going to continue for a very, very long time. The Republic falls, the Empire rises. The Empire falls, the First Order rises, the First Order falls, and the consecration of the Impalers rises, or whatever they want to call it next. And the list goes on and on and on throughout history until it never solves itself and nobody can solve it. That means a lot of people are going to be in suffering, and then there are going to be periods where everybody is thriving. Now, that just means that my idea of balance in the Force is a little more true than how George Lucas originally conceived it. Oh my God, that's sacrilegious. I shouldn't be saying that. Whatever. Um, yeah, I can say whatever I want because I'm just a guy. Anyways, that means that there's always going to be the dark side. There's always going to be the light side, given that all these millions of other galaxies are able to produce dark side and light side characters. They're always going to be there. So balance is equal parts of both. And we're going to probably see an expansion on that in the skeleton crew when it comes up. But I'd love to hear from you guys what you think about this. And again, thank you to the one who commented in gave me this idea for this video. See, I do listen to you guys. Aw, isn't that sweet? But go ahead and keep leaving comments down there. I love reading them and I love getting new ideas from them from your perspective and you'll get a shout out when I do. So 
Also, don't forget to slap that subscribe button like it's an unruly Jawa. And this is Gerald of Star Wars Fanatic signing off, wishing you all great health, happiness, and peace. Thank you all for watching. And remember, this is the way. And positivity in Star Wars can be the only way.